Hi everyone and welcome to a new video that has been voted for by our patrons. So thank you so much for Patreon members for supporting the channel and voting for this video. So they have voted for how to go ahead and make a physics based movement system for a character. So we're going to look at making a sort of super monkey ball type game where you can roll around as a ball and control it as well as show how to use some like gravity affecting different devices to pull the ball in different directions for that really cool physics gameplay that you would expect. So let's jump straight in and have a look how it's achieved. So here we are in a third person template map. Uh, this is a blank map, blank template and it's standard third person character stuff. So we're gonna create our own character, a uh, physics based one. So we right click, create a blueprint class and we're gonna choose a pawn. Now we wanna use a pawn in this case because we're gonna do like a rolling ball, like a super monkey ball or something similar to that. So we click pawn and we're gonna go BP, monkey ball. And open this up. So our character, quote unquote character, needs to be a sphere, like that. And I'm going to drag that on top of the default scene root there to make that the uh, the root component. Okay, so if you're dealing with physics, the thing that is the root component is the physics asset that you want to move around. Anything else wants to be attached to that. Once you've done that, we're going to add the camera. So we're going to do a spring arm. And I'll attach that spring arm, we're going to add a camera. Much like you would do any other third person character, like that. With the spring arm selected, you want to choose the use pawn control rotation. And this is because we still want to control the camera and it, which way it's pointing using our mouse, just like you would expect to when you're controlling a third person character. Okay, so let's first of all get that bit working. So I'm going to go to my event graph. And I need to have the begin play to register my input, enhanced input actions context. So we need to start off by getting the player controller. And from that, we need to get the enhanced input local player subsystem, which is this one down here, the pink F. And from that, we can then type in the word context and we want to choose the add mapping context. This is so we can register our enhanced input actions to our Gameplay. So choose your default from the mapping context and we're good to start adding our inputs to this thing. So as I said, we're gonna make the camera turn around with our mouse. So we're gonna start off with IA look <clears throat> as an action event. And we're then gonna drag in our, uh, not sorry, drag in, uh, we're gonna right click and do uh, add controller hitch input and add controller your input it needs to take two values which are going to come from this two ve 2d vector just right click on the 2d vector and split it and you'll get your two values here so pitch is up and down and yours left and right so x is going to go into the your and y is going to go into the pitch and we hit compile and save on that so i want to drag this now into my uh, not drag it into my scene i want to change my player start to use our character here instead of a third person character so in the world settings and if you don't have access to it you can just go to your window and choose world settings and you want to change the default pawn class here to your uh, monkey ball so when i push play now i've got my ball here and i can look around All right, so now at the moment they're staying in the air so we just need to enable physics and do the physics co controls so back on our monkey ball you want to select the sphere asset and go over to the right hand side and tick simulate physics when you simulate physics on a component it will simulate physics but everything attached to it will also go with it now it doesn't mean the spring arm is going to go nuts because we've also attached it with a use pawn control rotation ticked on so it's not going to be inheriting any of those uh, settings from the monkey ball so push it down and I'm going to drop to the floor. And I can still move my camera around. I just can't move yet. So let's add some movement. So I'm going to go back into my monkey ball, go into the event graph and do IA move. And do enhanced input action move. And all I'm doing here is drag out my sphere and do add force. 
and on the move here we need to work out what force we want to give it now i'm only worried about one direction i only want to go forward and backwards I'm not going to make it like strafing probably so on the sphere here the trigger is going to go to add force and the force value is going to come from the action value so i'm going to split this and we want to use the y action value so it's the w and s key are going to control this and i want to multiply it by the direction i want it to go in and the direction I want to go is whichever way the control rotation is facing in the yaw. So we're going to get the control rotation. And we're going to break this open with a split. And then we're going to do a make rotator. And just plug in the yaw on its own. This is so we, we can ignore the pitch and roll values and just zero them out. Because we're only concerned with the yaw. With that done, we can drag that from there and get the forward vector and multiply that by our action value y. This will be our, basically a scalar. It's going to scale the value based upon that. So let's just drag that in there and then apply that into the force there. Okay. Let's hit compile and test that out. So now I can look around and if I push W, we are applying force. But as you can see, nothing's really happening. And that's because we have to give it a bit more strength than this. Now, that is because this value is going to be between 0 and 1, and then this value is going between 0 and 1. So we're literally just getting a value of 1. So we're going to go to add pin, and we're going to change this pin here to its strength. So we're going to change it to two float. And here will be where you tweak things to get exactly how you want it to go. So we'll start off with 1,000, and we'll fluctuate that up and down as we need to. Need a little bit more. So it also depends on like, how heavy the thing is. So bear that in mind. Let's try 10,000. Got a little bit of movement. And let's go a little bit higher than that. Let's go into 50,000 then. So five times stronger. There we go. And it's now going to push it and roll it in the way that I'm angling the mouse and looking in that direction. And if I were to hold down the S key, it would sort of like a break. And it will break it down and make it go backwards. Now, if you wanted it to also take into account the left and right action, you can do that too if you like. All you have to do is add in uh, another add force to this. And it'll be basically the same as this one. So we're just going to copy this, paste that in here, put that into force. Uh, the vector, though, is going to be the make rotator. I'm going to get the right vector from it. And you'll plug that into the top. And then the action value X here will go into the middle in there. So now we can now go left and right as well. So let's go back to our game. If I hold down right, I'm going to roll to the right. Hold down left, we'll break and go to the left. And so I can use these sort of controls to sort of manipulate this. And because we've got it attached to that input, I can now attach this and make it work with my controller. So let me just plug in my controller. And now I'm using... Oh. Now I'm going to use the controller. Now, as you can see, the controller is going to give me massive scaling issues. And that is because the value I'm getting from the controller is going to be far, far greater than just one. It's not just off and on. that they It's been scaled as well. So if we go to our input settings and go to the mappings for our movement and look for the gamepad left thumbstick, go to modifiers, scalar, and you can see it's been scaled by 50 in each of them. You just turn this down. For your character so we just do one one or you just remove the scale if you want it uh, at all so just bring that in and now i can move it around like i was just doing it and you can now physics going up and down slump, uh ramps and slopes and you can use it to build momentum and launch yourself off of platforms as you so wish Now, because it is a physics object, that means you can do some physics-based action multiplier to it. So, for example, we can do a gravity well. So, if I go ahead and create a gravity well, 
I'm going to create a new blueprint class, an actor, BP gravity well, and open this up. We're going to add a sphere collision to this thing. And I'm going to change the size of it to, I don't know, let's say 500. And the radius, there we go. And basically anything that enters it is going to apply a force to it. So on the event graph here, we want to, on a tick, apply a force to anything that is overlapping it. So if I want it to affect every single physics asset that's inside that area, including things other than the player, on the tick event, I'm going to drag out my sphere component. And then from there, I'm going to get the overlapping components. And you want components, not actors. The reason why is because uh, physics is only on enabled on components, not actors. So you want to get overlapping components. And do a for each loop. And it's not great to put this on a tick, but we'll do as we best we can. Um, and we'll see how it goes. So the array element here, you want to see does, uh, not does, sorry, simulating, yeah, is simulating physics. And then put that into a branch. And we want to add a force to this thing. So add force. And the force is going to point it towards the center of our sphere. So we want to get the direction from uh, this actor. So get the components location, get world location. So direction is going to come from the get world location get direction uh, so from that one to our center so we do get actor location and then you give this a strength so we multiply this by a float and we'll give it uh, 50,000 in the force there pile save so let's put in our gravity well on the map so let's put it, uh, let's put it over here. So if I roll towards it, I should have made the sphere visible, but I'm not going to touch any buttons now, and it's going to pull me closer to it, okay? And the gravity of it is going to just fling me around and things like that. Um, let me just turn on the collision view so you can see it. So hit in the game, we'll turn off, and we'll put that in there. And if I try and skirt it, it's going to pull me in. I'm not holding any buttons at the moment. And it's going to try and pull me in to the center of it. And get a little bit of gravity. And obviously this works when you have multiple overlapping if you want as well. So you can do that. Do it overlapping there. And it's pulled us into this one here. Now, there's a lot more you can do with this, such as looking at mass of things and increasing the gravity, the pull based on the mass. Um, but we can fight it and get out if we want, like that. Okay. And that's how we make a physics character. And there you have it. That's how you make a physics based character. Now, if you like this video and want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can support the channel and cast your vote onto this month's poll. Thanks so much to all the patrons for supporting the channel and everyone on YouTube as well. If you want to like this video, make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.